Hello, this is Eloisa with Math Leopard. Welcome to my video on the harmony of man as depicted in the illustrations of Europe's late medieval period. We begin with a pentagonal representation of man inscribing a perfect circle. Oh heavens, let's cover that up. Each of the seven planets of antiquity influenced the body of man in parallel to their distinct nature. The moon influences the cerebrum, or emotional brain, the oculus sinister, or left eye, and the ventriculus gustus, or quote, taste of the stomach. Next, the planet Mercury influences our lingua, or language slash tongue, the manus digiti, or fingers of the hand, the cerebrum, or intellect in this case, and memoriam, or memory. Proceeding to the planet Venus, she influences the mamilla, or breasts, the lumbi, or lumbar region, the genitalia, and the gutar hepar, or throat liver, which I take to be the thyroid. The sun in all his glory influences our oculus dextra, or right eye, the core, or heart, and the cerebrum, or active brain in this case. Mars influences the oris sinestri, or left ear, the renes, or kidneys, the pudena, <coughs> and the cystis felis, or air in the chest. Jupiter influences the pulmones, or lungs, the costae, or ribs, the pulsus, or pulse, semen, and the hepar, or liver. Finally, the realm of Saturn influences our oris dextra, or right ear, the dentes, or teeth, the lien, or spleen, and the vesica, or bladder. But in what manner does the body of man exhibit the heavenly harmony of which I speak? To answer this, we begin with the measure of man as expressed in and of himself. The length of four fingers is termed one hand breadth, and six hand breadths, in turn, form the distance between shoulders, or one cubit. The height of man is four cubits, or twenty-four hand breadths. If we take only four hand breadths, this measures one foot. Hence the height of man is six self-referential feet. Note that to each man is assigned a unique cubit according to his build, in much the same manner as the measure of the sun in Chinese medicine. The intervals of music can be understood by looking at the octave of Pythagoras. Counting from six to twelve, the ratio produced is that of one to two. This is the diapason, or octave interval. This relates to the cubit measure of man, in that four cubit diapasons traverse his height. Next is a ratio between six and nine, or eight and twelve, each simplifying to two to three, known as a fifth, or diapente, interval. If we superimpose the six feet of man's height on top of his cubit diapason intervals, what results are four diapente intervals, two in his center and two at his extremes. Looking at three concentric circles of radii three, two, and one feet, respectively, we see that there are two diapente intervals within the smallest circle and two within the largest, but none in the central circle. Now let's consider the ratio from six to eight or nine to twelve, each simplifying to three to four, known as a fourth or a diatessaron. If we follow the solid purple line from six to nine, and then the solid pink line from 9 to 12, or, conversely, the dashed pink line from 6 to 8, and the dashed purple line from 8 to 12, we see that in both cases a diapente and a diatessaron traverse the diapason. Hence, within each sea green diapason circle, we can inscribe tangent diapente and diatessaron circles. Note how the diatessaron intervals in pink lie outside of the central circle within the radius of the middle. If we take the circle bisecting this difference in these two radii, it perfectly encompasses two octaves known as the dis diapason interval, of which three overlapping in Wesica Piscis formation traverse the height of man. Focusing on the points of tangency between these harmonious intervals, we begin at the bottom with the feet. Next we arrive at the shins, exactly one foot, or quote, fifth, higher, increasing by a quote, fourth, or diatessaron, we arrive just beneath the knees. Increasing another fourth lands us just above the knees. 
increasing a fifth or diapente lands us in unison with the diapason or cubit at the center of man, his genitals. Rising through another foot or fifth, we come to the stomach, followed by a fourth to complete the octave from genitals to solar plexus. One diatessaron higher, we come to the neck, and then the final diapente at the top of the head. But the harmony of man extends outward from his physical body into the realms of terra, the earth, aqua, water, air, and ignis, fire, all of whom are under the influence of Thalia, muse of bucolic poetry, who is trapped in the silence of the celestial underworld. Rising upwards, we encounter the sphere of the moon and the realm of Clio, muse of history. Her scale is a hypodorian, or, quote, below the Dorian, beginning with the proslambanomeni, or the note of A. It is the diatessaron from A to D, followed by the diapente from D to A. The sphere of Mercury and the realm of Calliope, muse of heroic poetry, yields the hypophrygian scale, or, quote, below the Phrygian, beginning with the hypate hypaton, or the note of B, B-flat in this case. It is the fourth from B-flat to E, followed by the fifth back to B-flat. The sphere of Venus is the realm of Terpsichore, muse of choral song. Hers is a hypolydian scale, or quote, below the Lydian, beginning with a par hypate hypaton, or C, it is the diatessaron from C to F sharp, and then the diapente back to C. The sphere of the sun is the realm of Melpomene, muse of tragedy, producing a Dorian scale, known for its virile and strong nature. Beginning with the Licanos Hippaton, or D, it is the fifth from D to A, followed by the fourth from A to D. The sphere of Mars is the realm of Erato, muse of lyric poetry. Hers is the Phrygian scale, being emotional and ecstatic in nature, beginning with the Hypate Maison, or E. It is the Diapente from E to B flat, followed by the Diatessaron. The sphere of Jupiter is the realm of Euterpe, muse of flute music. Her scale is the Lydian, which is lascivous and intimate, beginning with the par hypate maison, or F sharp in this case. It is the fifth from F sharp to C, followed by the fourth. The sphere of Saturn is the realm of polyhymnia, muse of sacred song. Her scale is the Mixolydian, beginning with the Licanos Meson, or G. It is the Diapente from G to D, followed by the Diatessaron back to G. Finally, the sphere of the stars is the realm of Urania, muse of astrology, whose scale is the hyper Mixolydian, or, quote, above, the Mixolydian, beginning with D, though in some instances it begins with the Maison, A. I've opted to begin with the D that cuts the Mixolydian in order to mirror the naming convention that preceded this realm. It is the fourth from D to G, followed by the fifth back to D. These scales serve to touch the body and soul of man, yet there lie realms beyond the physical, mirroring in fractal nature, this same cosmic harmony. The octave, or diapason, can be expressed in reciprocal form as the ratio of two to one, the diapente as the ratio from three to two, and the diatessaron as the ratio from four to three. Three octaves, or the ter diapason, can be expressed as a ratio of three to one. The material fifth, or diapente materiale, consists of the elements of earth, 
water and air, whereas the material fourth, or diatesseron materiale, encompasses the element of fire. These four elements constitute the material octave of man, or his diapeson materiale. The middle fifth, or diapente medium, traverses the spheres of the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, whereas the middle fourth, or the diatesseron medium, contains the sphere of Saturn, the stars, and the primum mobile, or the cosmos itself. This marks the bridge from the spiritual to the material, or the middle octave of man. Beyond the cosmos lies the spiritual fifth, or diapente spirituali, encompassing the first six levels of the celestial hierarchy. Angels, archangels, principalities, powers, virtues, and dominions, followed by the spiritual fourth, or diatesseron spirituali, encompassing the last three levels of thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. This is, of course, the spiritual octave, or diapason spirituali. Altogether, these form the three constituent octaves of the human form. The highest diatesseron influences the spirit of man, whereas the next semi-diapente is his first active influence. The next three orders of angels influence his intellect, whereas the entire middle octave serves to influence both his rational and intellectual mind. The three lighter elements of fire, air, and water influence his soul, and finally the earth influences his body. These are the harmonies of man, expressed within his own body, sung to him by the wanderers beneath the starry sphere, and imparted to him by the hierarchies of heaven. Please subscribe to be updated when I post new videos. Thanks for playing, and I'll see you next time.